Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be breaking down this fly through a CRT TV effect that we see on the Matrix. I've always thought this was just such a cool effect and it uses a lot of really cool different effects and filters in Apple Motion. So we're gonna make sure to show you how to use all of those to get this kind of a cool effect. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and grab the finished effect as a free plugin down in the link below. And if you have a YouTuber, a TV show, a movie, a title effect, you wanna see how it's broken down, see how it's done, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to make that video for you. All right, let's break down this effect and then rebuild it. So as you can see, there's a couple things going on here. There's sort of this banding and this bowing happening where it's bulging a little bit and so you can see it's starting to stretch the image. And then you can see this banding sort of grows and shrinks as we get closer or farther away from the actual TV screen that we're going to be flying through. So we're going to need to reproduce these red, green, blue bands that you see. It's sort of harder to see in some places than others, especially as it fades out towards the end. But there's definitely some red, green, blue happening there in these bands. And then we're also going to want to reproduce this uh, Moira effect as well as the bulge and the uh, zoom through. So let's show you what the final effect is actually going to look like here. You can see we've got the red, green, blue banding that makes it look like a TV. We're going to have a bulge out effect and I even push it really far so that you start to really accentuate that splitting effect as it's going through the TV. That's something in the original is a little bit more subtle. And all of these parameters are gonna be tweakable so that you can fine tune it. Now, like I said, if you wanna jump straight to the end and just start tweaking parameters, the effect is in the download below. So just go ahead and grab that. All right, so let's jump into Apple Motion and start building this. As always, we're going to start with the same settings. We're just going to do a normal motion project. The only difference with this one is that it's a little bit longer. We want the effect to be a little bit slower. So we're going to change the duration to 10 seconds. And then I like the frame rate of 30, but really it doesn't matter. It's whatever you like working in. Once you have your project set up, we're just going to come down here and hit open. Now the next thing you're going to do is import your footage. I already happen to have a copy of this clip, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, but it's really whatever clip you're going to be building this effect on top of. Now, if you've made the same mistake I have of using a 1080p clip in a 4K timeline, it's pretty easy. Just go over here to Inspector and change the scale to 200%, and then it feels the frame nicely. All right, let's build the effect, starting with those red, green, and blue pixelation lines that we see in the original. If you just come down here to the pen tool, we're going to just draw a single line straight up and down, and this is gonna be the basis for an entire effect. I just hold the shift key to lock it so that it's perfectly vertical. If I come over to the properties of the line, we wanna change it to zero, zero for the position so that it is centered, and then also turn off the fill because we don't want to have any extra color drawn anywhere else. If I come in here to the outline, this first line that we're gonna draw is gonna be red. Now, the red line isn't super red because we're going to be applying a blend mode to it. We don't want it to be super distracting. So I'm gonna turn down the green and the blue to 138. So I get this sort of salmon pink color. You can see if we zoom in here, we just have this single line right up the middle of our screen. Once we have this line and you can see that it's drawn correctly, I'm just gonna turn the width all the way down to one and I'm gonna rename it to be red line. Since we need to do the green and blue lines as well, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this so we can get a red, green, and blue line. And then we're gonna come into each of these and we're going to adjust the colors and the stroke in the same way. So let's do the position first. We're just gonna nudge this over three pixels. Because the width of the line is one uh, and we have two lines, we have the red and now what will be the blue line, we need a one pixel gap between them. So that will be our three total pixels. And then I'm just going to invert what I've got here with this color graph so that the red is muted just like in the previous ones, but this time it's the blue that is cranked all the way up to full saturation. So we get this lavender blue color. And then we're gonna rinse and repeat with green. Now, if you're not very familiar with Apple Motion, you can't really see where this is going. Basically what we're doing is we're building up this red, green, and blue strip so that we can replicate it all the way across the screen. And then you can do interesting things like introduce blend modes or change the number of bands to create sort of these interesting banding effects. All right, now with the color set, we're just gonna nudge this over to six pixels. So we have the red at zero, the blue at three, and the green at six. 
we're going to zoom in here and you can see we have these three strips with a little pixel gap in between them. And now we are ready to replicate this into a full screen red, green, blue effect. Now to replicate all of these, all we need to do is group them together. I'm going to go ahead and call these our RGB lines, since I don't really know what the technical name is for those lines on a CRT TV. And then we're going to come up here to the top right corner and click replicate. And you can see that once we have this thing replicated, uh, it's not really covering the full screen. We want it to cover every inch. So the first thing we're going to do is change it to a line replication instead of a rectangle. And you can see that that just reduced the height and width because the replication only happens in a line. And we can drag one side over. And of course it needs to be 1920 because that is half of a 4K timeline. So that will be our starting point. And our ending point will be 1920 in the opposite direction. And then we can just start cranking up these points. And hopefully you can see we're already starting to get some of that Moira effect where the lines and the banding are starting to merge and combine in interesting ways. So when it comes to fine tuning the look of this final effect, this is one of the levers that you'll have to pull, is how many points are we showing at any given time, and how do we increase or decrease the number of points as the time goes on. So we're just gonna pick a number that looks kinda good for right now, 119 seems fine. Uh, we're gonna also turn it down a little bit. You can see the red, green, blue are super obvious. It's way too strong. And it's really easy to just dial this back. We're gonna come over here to the original group here for our replicator. And we're gonna change the blend mode. And I'm just gonna come down here and pick soft light. There's a lot of different blend modes, but I found that soft light sort of mimics the original a little bit where it looks like it's faded, but it still has a hint of color so that you don't always see the red, green, and blue coming through, but you do get a hint of it. So I think that looks pretty good. And so the next thing we need to do is introduce the bulging effect of a CRT TV. Now, I can't believe I have to explain this, but if you don't know what a CRT TV looks like, um, it's it's probably because you haven't seen one and they haven't been relevant for 30 years, but they, they have a curve to the, to the actual shape of the TV screen. It bulges out. And so what we're going to do is use this bulge effect. You can see we have scale and amount, and I think they're poorly named. To me, amount should be the scale and scale should be the amount because scale is sort of the size. But anyway, we're gonna crank up the amount. I found 4,000 looks pretty good. It's just big enough that the big main part of the bulge effect in the middle affects most of the screen. I've also experimented with five and 6,000. I think they look really good too. So it just depends on the effect you're going for. Now, as I play with the scale, I'm already noticing that I don't have enough lines. So I'm gonna come into our replicator here and I'm just gonna crank this up a little bit more. I want it to feel nice and smooth and consistent. And even on the outside edges, you're starting to see these circular patterns emerge as the bulge causes it to overlap with other lines. So I think this is really good. 250 seems about right. Um, but like I said, it's something that you can tune to taste. Now with this scaling effect, what we want to do is bounce back and forth between probably somewhere around 0.5 ish, maybe go all the way down to negative one, and then all the way up to one is about the neutral state. So that's what we want to have our effect oscillate between. And so luckily for us, there is a parameter behavior called oscillate that will do this bouncing back and forth between these for us. So all we're going to do is just come over here to our scale and we're gonna pick 0.25. I think that's a good medium point for the values to bounce around between. And then I'm gonna come over here to the little drop down arrow next to the keyframe indicator on the bulge. And I'm gonna choose the add parameter behavior and I'm gonna come all the way down here to oscillate. Now, Oscillate has three major parameters. The phase, you can see down at the very bottom, changes which part of the oscillation up and down you are in. The speed is how quickly it oscillates, and the amplitude is how much it oscillates. So how big of a value does it bounce back and forth between? Now, the total frames for our timeline is 300, so I'm gonna to try to pick something for our speed that is a multiplier of 300. So I'm gonna start with three, and I can already see by the graph down at the bottom, that's not fast enough, that's one up and then down, and I want it to be a little bit faster than that. So let's maybe pick, uh, I don't know, like six or something, just so that we get one round trip all the way out and all the way back. And you can see with our little sign graph down there, that uh, at six, 
that's exactly enough to go all the way down and all the way back. So we could make a repeating effect out of this. All right, so that is our speed. Now we need to figure out our amplitude. Now, if you remember, we started at 0.25 and we want it to bounce back and forth between about one, which was neutral and negative 0.5. So if we do a amplitude of 0 0.75, 0 0.75 up, from 0.25 is one, and 0.25 minus 0.75 is negative 0.5. So that's the amplitude that will get us this bounce back and forth. Uh, I think you can push it farther, like if you wanna go uh, to zero as the starting point, so going back to the bulge and setting that as its original behavior and then making the amplitude one, I think that works too, but I like this look. Going back to the very beginning, if you remember one of the things that had a really cool effect was increasing and decreasing the number of points that were being replicated. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to add a parameter behavior to the number of points on our replicator. Now the one that we're looking for is a nice continuous growth over time and that is called the rate modifier. So we're gonna go ahead and add a rate and you just pick the amount that you want it to grow over time. So I'm gonna pick I don't know, five, six, something relatively small. Um, I don't know, maybe 20. And you can see the bottom graph is just this steady line going up. And if we come over here to our replicator, we can actually scrub ahead in the timeline and we can see that it ends around 450 lines. And that feels like a good number. And you can see the effect as it plays in the timeline. It has this nice swirling, duplicating effect. You can definitely see it on the sides uh, where you have all of these lines showing up. Um, as the timeline goes on. And with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and call this a finished effect. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Your support really does mean the world to me. If you have a YouTuber, a TV show, a title, an effect, whatever it is, you wanna know how to make it, please make sure that you leave that in the comments below so I can be sure to make that video for you. I've got several effects from other YouTubers as well as a couple motion graphic effects, as well as a replication of a commercial made by Apple, all in the works. So if you wanna see those, make sure that you stick around. I think you'll enjoy it and you'll learn a lot in the process. All right, that's all for this one. We will catch you next time. Thanks.